Today, let's lay some track and some points. Hi, welcome back to Chadwick Model Railway. I'm Charlie. This is a bit of an epic, this video. It's um, probably about 40 minutes long. And the reason I've drawn it out is that I get a lot of requests from subscribers to go through track laying and how to lay points and that sort of stuff. So rather than just do it in cuts, this time I am gonna go through the motions of exactly how I do it, how I wire it, turn the boards um, upside down so um, you can see how I put my point motors in and how I do the wiring. Um, also cables that go off to a mimic board and that kind of thing. During the video, I made a humongous mistake, and as you watch it, you might not actually notice what I did wrong. Um, but at the end of the video, I show you what I did wrong, and obviously I had, um, I had to sort that out, but it all becomes obvious in the end. Um, but bear with me, it was, it was a simple mistake to make, but I really didn't see it um, until way, way through the video, and I looked back and thought, what on earth have I done? So. I'll hold you in suspense with that one, but hopefully you'll enjoy it. Um, as usual, please don't uh, um, please don't hesitate to subscribe. Um, you know, it's, it's having the subscribers that keep the channel going and sort of maintain my enthusiasm. Um, so please sit back and get yourself a cup of tea. Sit back and enjoy this one, um, and bear with it. And I'll see you at the end. A couple of videos ago, I mentioned that um, the boards are connected normally through these quick release chocolate block connectors and all they do is they simply pull apart and you have a set of pins and a set um, of openings that kind of are spring loaded so you can pop your cables in there the outgo in there and that's it so on one board all i simply do is screw this to to the side of the um, across member and on this one here this one just kind of dangles down and and plugs into it it's kind of it's quite straightforward really and i think these things are uh, available from all kind of good outlets and uh, I'm always mentioning Squires so if you want to go onto the squires.com website uh, that's where you're going to find them and they're quite uh, the contact they make is quite good it's quite a, a vicious little kind of connector it's pretty good um, but yeah kind of quite straightforward and it's very much what you see is what you get in a previous video I showed you a track diagram that I'd drawn with Rail Modeler, an Apple-based um, model railway design program. But I was fortunate enough um, that a guy called Gary McPherson, who uses AnyRail, which is a PC system, and I must confess it does seem to be much better, and Gary sent me this uh, JPEG of my track plan. And it's far simpler to see this here um, before I show you the next section of this video, because it kind of lays it out much more simple. And on the left hand side, you can see those two black lines. Those are the ones that come from the viaduct and then come in and go straight through the center of the four lines of Chadwick. Um, the inside red line, that's, that's my sort of parcels area that I was sort of toying with. Um, but as you can see, if you come up that center line off, well, off the um, viaduct, you then hit that left hand curved point and should you decide to go into the up in the branch line then you go through that double slip um, and then away past that catch point up into the new branch line area and looking at it here it's far more um, easy to understand than what i'm about to show you uh, during the video so if you can keep that in mind as we embark on the next section of the video it will kind of make more sense but gary i'm in your debt I'd appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel. I notice that actually only about 25% of my viewers do. And also, if you click the little bell icon, then you'll get a notification when the next video is released. So you join me now as I'm just getting this first board, uh, the track laid, and get this one finished over the next day or two. And as the track comes off the viaduct, what I've decided to do is put some uh, side elevation or as they call it cant or super elevation and as you can see I've used uh, small strips of white plastic card and it goes from half mil to one mil to one and a half mil as it goes around the bend and then kind of backs off on the other side. Coming over to the other side here I've decided to use a left hand electro frog curved point to give me the turn to come from this um, 
uh, the upline here coming off the viaduct to be able to get the trains to run up this um, elevated section which will go along to uh, my um, branch station which would be above the fiddle yard and sadly what I don't have with me is a curved right sorry a curved left hand electro frog point but this is old initial frog here one that kind of allows me to sort of size it all up so it'll come through there into a double slip and the reason I've used a double slip rather than a single slip was if kind of in reality the viaduct was closed or one line of the viaduct was closed then it will allow two-way traffic on either of the lines so you can come up the line coming out of Chadwick Parkway and then go against the flow as it were should this line on the viaduct be unserviceable so that's why I've used a double slip rather than a single slip so just to remind you then so a, a, um, a train can come from the viaduct um, straight through the curved point um, and straight through this point and then off um, into Chadwick and coming the other way um, it comes into this double slip and goes back out the other way and then either lines then can go up into the um, new branch line station and yep that's right it can come from there up to the branch line station and then coming back from the branch line station um, there's a catch point here to obviously to stop air, uh, stop trains hitting this point um, should you have a runaway so that makes it a bit more prototypical that's a word I, uh, I don't like to use um, with these with these ones here I removed the springs um, from these double slips um, and I'll just show you how I do that in close-up if you're using tortoise point motors they recommend removing the springs from all double slips and points So you just get this little cap to spring off, there it goes. And there's the spring underneath. Which I can't remove without getting in the way of the camera. And there it goes, flicked away, pop the little cover back on. And we're good to go easy and whilst we're on the subject of tortoise point motors I think it's just worthy of a note that, that I change these basic um, actuating uh, wires from um, 0.6 of a mil which I think you'll find they are let's have a look Point 0.6 to these much uh, thicker sort of uh, piano wire ones which are one mil just zero that yeah one mil give or take a fluctuation um, and they are far more um, what should we say precise there's not much these are very kind of not flimsy but they're not as positive as you can see these are much more aggressive one of a better term and I've just glued these points down now as you can see it's just starting to dry um, with uh, the Sulant, the Woodland Scenics foam tack and they're in pretty good but I know because I haven't used too much they will lift, lift up okay and all the cables are back down so we should be good to go. Well it's now the following day and as you can see my SLE87 the Code 100 curved electro frog left hand point has arrived God, that's a mouthful 17 pound 85 from east somerset models support your local model shop so i'm going to modify this in double quick time and all i've done already is i have three cables trimmed back that's the green for the frog um, and a red and black cable to go onto here and the tools i need is my faithful sturdy uh, draper soldering iron some 60 40 solder and a file Right, I shall show you quickly how easy it is to modify these points. So, whip it out of the box, give it a quick check over. Yeah, all oh, looks good. Piece of cake. Great. And if I zoom in a bit now. There. 
there are two little links across here which need to be removed. So with a pair of snips, just go straight in there. There's one gone and there's two gone. And you don't need to do this modification at all. It just enhances the running value. It just makes it more reliable. Now, hopefully you can see if I use this pointer, there are four bits of rail exposed. And what I intend to do is solder my cables across those two like that and I've got the other two like that. And it, all this does is it is allows me to put the droppers straight onto there and take the cables down through the same hole. So the first thing we need to do is to file those rails to make sure we get a good solder joint. Super job. Then with my trusty soldering iron, a little bit of solder. And hopefully you can see this. So add the heat. A little dab of solder. Stay out of the way of the camera, Charlie, so they can see what you're doing. One. Two. Three. Four, there's my solder in place. Stow that. And pop it back up. Now it's black to the back, so that's the back. So that one has to be the black cable. So the black cable goes there. So I shall do the red one first. And I do the outside ones. Oh, no, I haven't. <laughs> I need to tin the cables. Can you see? Yes, you can. I should do all three cables as I do this. And also, I just need to trim down that frog wire and then just trim that, uh, just solder. Uh, tin that cable too. Okay, so we said it was black to the back, which is the back, is that one there, so that must be the red. So you can see a bit better, can you see there? Yep. Mm -hmm. So, we're all tinned ready to go. Give the solder and I a wipe, pick out a little bit more solder, pop it in place, dab in with the heat, take the solder and iron away, keep it still, give it a tug, we're good. Then the second one, in with the heat, away with the heat, give it a tug, we're good. And then the same with the black. There's the front one. So that's the droppers in place. All quite straightforward. Finally, there's the frog cable, not quite so easy because it's a single strand. And we're good. And that is literally just a couple of minutes, isn't it? It's no big deal. It's just a, a confidence issue with most people with these things. 
Um, yeah, it's all straightforward really. And the only other thing I need to do being tortoise point motors is once more remove that spring. I know it seems a bit brutal. Just get in there with a pair of snips and I'll just, I'll just rip it out. There we go. Right, let's whack this in. So with these wired up ready to go, now it's just a case of getting them in the exact position um, where I need them um, and then drilling through some pilot holes for the um, tortoise point motors, actu arm, actu arms, actuator arms uh, to come from underneath. Um, and what I normally do is put a little uh, nail in to figure out where it's going to go and then take the nail out, drill a pilot hole through and then follow that with a 10 mil drill because that's the size of hole that these uh, slow action motors need. Um, of course, the planning stage before you even go anywhere near this is to check the underside of the board to make sure you've got no, uh, there's no frames in the way and um, obviously I did check them and uh, fortunately there was nothing in the way so we're good to go. Um, so it's a case of popping these two on now, um, finding where they're both going to sit this is the first stage of the, um, of the incline to go over the flyover and I wanted this one to end, would not go beyond the end of this board and I think that kind of works just about right is where uh, that incline is going to start and that kind of fits in with the other boards. So it's a case now of putting some pilot holes through, drilling through, fitting these one, two, three uh, tortoise point motors. I may feel extravagant and actually fit a a motor on that um, catch point as well. Um, connect these up and then there's one more point to go in um, for the passing loop that runs into the station. So let's get about it. Bringing a bit more track into play we can kind of see how it will shape up once it's kind of in position. to make sure that we are kind of in the right place and then I'll do this point first rather than try and drill them all at the same time because no doubt in, there's no doubt in my mind that you'd never get it right first time and that um, there'll always be some kind of a mismatch then with the with the point, point motors where they come through. So that looks about right, I think that's about right. That would look okay between there and there. That's the one that goes off into the branch line and then there's a small gauge from Pico, um, a six foot way gauge. And if you've never seen one of these that's the sort of um, streamline track and that's the set, set track gauge and the height of it is that uh, is four platforms um, and for this layout when these two these four lines go straight through the station I'm going to actually have a wider gap in the center and a smaller gap uh, between the running lines so it will actually be the set track kind of distance that I'm going to go for through there which is about right and that all kind of works so I just need to remove this stuff mark out where this point motor is going to go through that hole there and uh, and I say do this point first once that one's in and sorted and then come on to this one and then we'll build the rest of the track on from there So what I do is get a very small tack, cut the head off, put the point blades in the centre and then put that tack through the hole of the, where the actuator arm goes, bang it in, take out the point and then mark out exactly where we are and then go through there with the drill. Check underneath and we are clear, pull out the pin. Beautiful. 
and then with a 10 mil drill That's where the point motor needs to go. So now I'll tip the board on its end and then secure the point motor and then secure the point on top of the point motor um, and that should be good. I think it's always kind of interesting to take a look at the underside of boards and uh, as you can see here there's a few um, old wires just kind of cut off now and that's because of the uh, change I did before um, where the previous points used to be. So we've got a few loose ends to sort out um, and over here if I zoom in a little bit you can see where I'm working on whoops where I'm working on this tortoise point motor and I tend to use a piece of cork underneath the, these motors um, just to help deaden the sound and I'm a strong believer in these uh, Bosch glue guns because they kind of bond anything to anything in a matter of seconds but <laughs> Mind you, that can be that can clearly be a disadvantage. I better get that on before it sets. So you just pop it on, give it a kind of twist, and in next to no time, that is absolutely solid. In the meantime, the old soldering iron is now warming up, and as I've previously used this one before, I now need to just desolder um, those terminals, screw this in, and then uh, resolder on the fresh ones and we're good to go. With the uh, larger piano wire that I, I use, that I mentioned earlier, you need to drill out this small hole. Hopefully you can see this. There's a very small hole um, where the armature uh, wire goes through and you need to drill it out with, uh, with a one mil drill um, to uh, enable that, that thicker wire to go through. So I've now soldered on seven of the eight cables. The one missing uh, is the green frog wire, which I'll have to drop down once I've fitted the point. And the way these things work is that uh, track power comes in on red and black, and then when it switches, it puts the whichever feed through onto the frog cable to change the polarity of the frog. And the uh, tortoise point motor is operated um, on the two outside terminals, and I always use yellow and blue. The other three terminals are another side of the switch, um, so I'm taking um, the precaution of fitting some cables to them just in case in the future that I need um, another facility, such as changing a signal or perhaps lights on a mimic board. Before we go any further, of course, it's always best to test the switch to make sure that it works. And if I use a 9 volt battery and cross my fingers, I don't know why I say that, I've never found a duff one yet. And then pop these on there. And it goes across one way. And if I reverse them, and then hopefully you can hear, or perhaps not, how quiet these motors are. And it's as simple as that. I did mention um, that the, the hole for this wire needed to be opened up to one mil. Actually, I had to use a 1.2 mil drill to open it up. It still um, was so awkward to get into it. So uh, yes, it's one more 1.2 mil drill uh, to accommodate the actuator wire. Well, as you can see, I flipped the board back over and uh, there's the armature wire coming through from the other side. So what I need to do now is to drill a hole to allow these um, the power cables to run uh, down onto a junction blocks and, and there's the green cable for the frog. So the first thing we do is we thread the armature wire through the switch blade of the point and then get a pen and mark it off. Okay, so that's where that's going to go in the middle. Make sure that the um, that the, the point has full operation down there so we know we're in the right area and then I need a hole just here 
Yep, and then the one for the for the frog wire just there. And underneath, make sure we're good. Same with that one. And then it's just a simple case of threading the cables through. Then of course we need to flip the board back over and connect it all up. But before we do that, of course, we can glue down this point. Right, that's better. Okay, so that's where the point's going to go. And then if I just manually operate the point motor underneath and make sure it actually swings all the way. Beautiful. Great, so I need some glue to glue this down and we should be away. Now before we go any further I'm going to cut down this piece of wire because it's clearly um, could easily be a hazard for your eyes. So I'll cut it off and leave about an inch um, sticking out and this really is a hard piece of steel. Right. Okay, so it's not such a hazard now of, of putting your head over the top of this. Um, if I zoom in a little bit here, where's my zoomer? There we go. And all I need to do is put some glue on here and obviously avoid this area here because the last thing I need to do is, um, is glue together the fish plate, uh, the, uh, the switch blade and Rest assured, I'm sure we've all made silly mistakes in the past. And I must confess, I am one of the first to admit mine. Oh, I should have a spreader nearby. Yep. That's going to go about there. And I'm just going to pop a little bit of foam in here where these lines will cross over. So here we have a beautifully manicured piece of foam. It doesn't have to be that good to go in that gap. Go there. A little bit of foam in the bar, glue in the bottom. Beautiful. Okay. Realign the. Uh, pull the cables down. Pop the point in position. Check once more the. The actuator runs fully, and yes it does, and I'm going to leave it in the mid position. And I can feel the sort of grabby nature of this glue, though I think I'm just going to pop some underneath that far end. Good to go. Pop a weight on. And come back in about an hour. Now if you're anything like me, when you go to cut these um, the wires on these on point motors, it um it breeds fear within me, it really does, because um, I, cause I upgrade, upgrade um, these wires. They really, really don't um, cut easily with a decent pair of snips. So I tend to cut them an inch or two above and then go in with a Dremel. And yes, I have melted 
the switchblades of points before with a Dremel and it's something that um, you need to do very very carefully it really can go wrong very very quickly so what I use is where is it is this type of uh, let's call it a Dremel it's actually made from it was one of the old maplings and I use a, uh, a diamond disc cutter and I just go in and if I've been in there too long, I think it's getting hot, just pull away and just give it a few minutes to cool down. Because if you don't give it time to cool down, you end up with a mess like this one. And I'll just show you this in close up. So hopefully you can see if you look closely, this hole here has started to, has obviously been exposed to heat and it's melted. And the same on the other side, you can see that. Um, whereas this side is far worse. You can see this one's kind of melted right over and and the underside is, uh, you can see what's gone on. Um, fortunately, I bought this uh, double slip second hand at a model railway fair. So I only paid 18 pounds rather than the 38 pounds new or 44 pounds, I think, from Pico themselves. Um, but I thought it'd be worth the risk. And, and the switch blades all seem in perfect condition. So I thought I'd give it a go. Anyway, so we'll now trim my wires. And then if you keep your fingers crossed, hopefully it shouldn't all go wrong. Okay, here we go. Um, I've got this, the, uh, the drill up fairly high and it's a case of getting in and getting out. And then hopefully you could see that that went um, swimmingly well. And then finally, the new point which should be all good to go Well, that was fun. Of course, you do need to wear goggles. You've only got one pair of eyes. And, um, you know, whilst you could sort of try and cuff it with reading glasses, the sparks and the, the um, metal fragments go up absolutely everywhere. So please, please, please do wear a pair of goggles. Um, be careful of the other rails around it. When you go in with one of these, they really, really don't take prisoners. Um, and um, on your head be it, really. I, I, you know, so, I mean, I have ruined points before, um, so tread carefully. So moving on to the double slip, and now it's really a case of just repeating what I did earlier on this point here. It's all kind of straightforward. Um, you just need to figure out where the point's going to go, get it in there nice and snug. And I've used a pair of those um, off-cut uh, armature uh, uh, wires. And I can poke those in the holes, getting the blades in the central position, pop them in and make a hole in the um, in the in the foam and hopefully when I pull it out we'll see where is there and there check underneath And then the big drill, and we're away. It also needs some holes for the cables. So having flipped the board back over the other side, here's the, um, the frog wire coming through from that curved point and comes up and obviously soldered back onto that terminal. And then the, um, the power feed for the point um, and 
the power for the, to switch the frog all go back off um, into a into a terminal block here. Um, and this one's marked inner circuit because I have two circuits. One's the inner circuit and one's the outer circuit because I have two power districts. So if something uh, shorts out on the inner circuit, um, the outer circuit keeps running and it's easier than to fault find. Coming back down here, I've now uh, glued in a couple of pads for those uh, the two, to two tortoise point motors um, for the double slip and there's the first one taking shape and the other one will go in here and I've obviously numbered them up um, so that when uh, if there's any problems in the future I know which ones are which um, on my little um, on my notepad so I know exactly what's going on um, and there hopefully you can see one of the holes that I drilled through with the 10 mil drill so that's coming into into play and it's just exactly the same really as when I did the first point it's now about an hour later and as you can see these two point motors are in, tested um, and the only thing missing from them is obviously we don't use the side of the switch that switches the frog. Um, I'm just using the other side of the switch um, just in case I need um, power to do a mimic board. So again I've used a purple, pink and brown um, and obviously there's no track feed or frog to be switched so they are what they are. And I've ran these cables back. Time to flip it over again and uh, fit that double slip. So here's the double slip just dropping onto those two actuator arms. A little bit more fiddly this time because I've got these wires to poke down. There's the red. And the black and those are the power feeds to the point itself. And then I've got these insulated fish plates then to thread onto the curved point. Beautiful. Okay, pull those cables tight. Okay, looks good. And so all I'm gonna do now is operate the points and make sure those um, The switch plays work okay. That's fine. And the second one. It's just trying to make sure they're in a gut, the ideal kind of place. And they work absolutely fine. Um, so I need to glue this down and cut those, uh, those tabs. Okay, just need to weigh that down and, uh, and come back in a couple of hours. Well, that's the point and the double slip uh, in and wired. Um, a function, they, they work perfectly well. So now it's a case of popping in the bits of track to go in between. I've already put this piece of track in here and that's okay. Um, paying particular attention to maintain that sort of the geometry, the profile um, of that arc. And then it's a case of, of um, whacking down the track. Um, and I've put the droppers on the tracks and I've always put my droppers so you can't see them from the outside. So I cut into the webbing slightly um, and then solder them on and then pop a couple of holes through the board. You might have noticed that I use quite a lot of insulated fish plates and that's because I'm into block detection and I therefore need to split certain um, lengths of track up into blocks so the computer recognises when a block is occupied and a train's moving through, um, just in case you think I'm using excessive amounts of um, insulated rail joiners. So now all I'm going to do is glue these ones down and we should be finished. 
So all I'm going to do is run a little bead along with the front rail and the same with the back rail. Of course it's a little bit more awkward this time because I put the super elevation um, pieces of plas plastic card in to give it that um, angled effect. I'm sure that'll work out fine. A little bit heavy on the glue there. Because <laughs> I don't need to take this up. Okay, so the cables are in. And then pop them into place. There we go. And of course, what we need to do now is hold it to make sure it stays there and to that end I brought some of my friends along <laughs> various glues I've used oops and that'll hold it in place while it dries Meanwhile, I'll get on and finish the rest. And so with the glue almost dry, it runs through faultlessly, but these pico points still need to be modified. And I have mentioned that in a previous video, so there should be a link just kind of here to show you how to do that. So, did you spot the horrendous cock up? Well, it happened at 24 minutes, 10 seconds in when I turned the board back over to fit the curved point because I didn't pick up the curved point. I went and picked up a left hand medium radius straight point. And then I proceeded to fit that and then I fitted the double slip and so on. And I fitted the point motors and did all the wiring. And then last night, just before I turned I looked at it and thought, what have I done? So this morning I came back and I ripped it all up and put it back the way it should be. So it is you, everything I've done in that video um, is exactly the same as you should do, except I had to move everything along a couple of inches because obviously the curve point is slightly longer than this medium radius point. We live and learn, or do we? Honestly, I felt such a nugget. Um, but anyway, hopefully you've, you've learned something from this, um, even if it's just to keep your points in, in separate places. I, oh God, what a dick, what a complete dick. And it's taken me hours to put it straight, but there we go. Now you might've thought that I could have just left that point in there, but um, it was the geometry of the curved point that really made the junction flow. So it really did have to go, but there we go. And if you've got any comments to make, then please leave in the comment section below. And whilst we're on the subject of comments, I tend to produce a video once every two weeks. Um, one time it will be a layout update as the build goes through, and then the subsequent one will be a more of a how-to. And if you've got any uh, preferences on what you'd like me to do on a how-to, then again, please leave them in the comment section below. And if the speed of this video was either far too slow for you and you'd rather have a more punchy video, then again, please say so. Or if you like a more of a slow, um, cruise through and if you're an experienced modeler then obviously that you have a fast forward button you can always whiz through to the bits you want um, and I try to please everyone but again unless you tell me what you're after it's very very hard for me to sort of fulfill your needs as it were there we are so it's December 20 no it's December 2019 and Christmas is coming and I do hope that you get what you deserve for Christmas you happy modelers you're going to get your trains and the children are going to fulfill you with stuff that you don't have to return and ask for the receipt because it wasn't quite what you'd hoped we've all done it haven't we um, so in that case then I'll what remains for me to say is wish you a very very happy Christmas a prosperous 2020 I thank my patrons please don't forget to subscribe I do value my subscribers and there should be two videos one here and one here for you to watch in the meantime have a great 2020 take care thanks a lot and bye bye